This was the scene on Watson Island when people had to evacuate the Meridian. And tonight, a new show took the stage and Local 10 was there. Sonella Sabovic is live on Watson Island tonight with this story. Sonella. Well, Alex and Andrew, I think by far I have one of the best assignments of the evening because guess who I just ran into a few moments ago? None other than Lady Gaga. Wait till you see what she is wearing this evening. She is sparkling and shining, and she's about to grace the stage there in just a few moments, getting everyone hyped up for the big game tomorrow. It's Super Bowl Eve, and the excitement is ramping up. We all know the parties don't disappoint in Miami, and that includes AT&T's Super Saturday Night and the headliner, Lady Gaga, ever the fashion trendsetter. She sparkled and shined for her little monsters on the red or black carpet, we should say. Her mother, Cynthia Germanata, also joining her daughter in a show of support. Fans have been lining up for hours at Meridian Island Gardens on Watson Island to watch Gaga perform. It's a star-studded event. ABC's Shark Tank investor and Dallas Maverick owner Mark Cuban stopped by to say hi. And even though his favorite team isn't playing tomorrow, he still got a top pick. I want the Chiefs to win because Patrick Mahomes is from Dallas. I'm going to be watching it and um, relax and hopefully get home at halftime watching with my kids. Do it again. It's over. This evening is much different than last night's event where severe weather canceled the Harry Styles concert. Fans saw this message flash across the screen. Extreme weather is approaching. Please calmly make your way to the exits now and evacuate. And based on this video, the evacuation was anything but calm. The Miami Fire Department issued the evacuation notice for public safety after the National Weather Service warned of severe thunderstorms with the possibility of tornadoes. And Harry Styles did apologize for that abrupt cancellation late last night, but no apologies here tonight because take a look at this. Fans are getting ready to see Lady Gaga. She is about to perform in just a few minutes. Again, getting everyone hyped up for the big game tomorrow. This is just one of the many parties happening across South Florida this evening. So Carlos and I, we're going to go watch Lady Gaga right now. We'll see you guys tomorrow <laughs> reporting live from Watson Island. Sonella Sabovic, Local 10 News. I'll send it back to you guys. Defense versus great offense. What a classic matchup for Super Bowl 54. I think defense wins again. I know Patrick Mahomes is magic. Tyreek the Cheetah can run past anybody. But I think in a game like this, the 49ers with their balance and versatility, not to mention the gauntlet that they went through during the regular season, will put them over the top. They will find a way to win. They'll score a lot of points, but make the key defensive stop when they need it the most. I'm picking the 49ers, 38-35. All right, I've got the Kansas City Chiefs winning this one here. I think this is going to be a great game. You've got an explosive offense that can flip the switch at any moment, going against a really great defense uh, from the 49ers. And there might be some hairy moments for the Chiefs, but I think that Patrick Mahomes has just enough special to be able to elevate his unit right above uh, the 49ers. The key for them will be getting off to a fast start, because then if you force Jimmy Garoppolo to have to pass a whole lot, he's definitely a capable passer, but he's also good for one or two interceptions a game. So, again, that's why I've got Patrick Mahomes winning this thing. It feels like they are on that path to destiny, and I've got them winning 35-27. The 49ers have a complete team from their smothering defense to their offense that just has so many weapons and so many game plans under Coach Kyle Shanahan. But games like the Super Bowl are when special players make special plays, and I believe quarterback Patrick Mahomes is going to do that for the Chiefs. My prediction, Kansas City 35, San Francisco 30. Red and gold. That's because one of Sycamore's own will be taking the field in Miami. Number 56, Ben Neiman. WGN's Julian Roos stopped by his high school this week to learn about the student, the football star, and how he made it to the Super Bowl at the age of 24. Very few signs of football stardom in this sleepy town of 18,000. The streets are quiet. The ground is covered in snow. But inside Sycamore High School, the pride runs deep because the Spartans' Ben Neiman, graduating class of 2014, is going to make a splash in Miami for the very first time in his career. Gail Sayers never played in the playoffs. Dick Butkus never got a chance to play. I mean, great Hall of Fame players. I'm not saying Ben's a Hall of Fame player, but he's going to get a chance to play in the Super Bowl. I mean, there, think about how many football players that played in the NFL 
that would what they would give up for this opportunity. And he's from Sycamore, Illinois. Joe Ryan's the varsity head football coach at Sycamore High School. He's been coaching for 32 years. He said during his high school years, Ben Neiman was a star on and off the field, but he never showed it. He walked around these hallways and he was the best football player that I've ever coached, but you didn't know it because he was just an everyday kid. He was a great teammate, great classmate. Um, you know, he's a perfect all-American kid, you know, and it was fun to be able to be a part of his life for three years. Humble and hardworking, level-headed and consistent. His dad coached college ball, so it was in his blood. Ben Neiman, number eight in high school, was the school's all-time leading receiver. He was good, really good. These clips from his highlights reel show you how good. Jake Countryman was Neiman's co-defensive coordinator. It's, it's crazy to think about now that he's playing in the Super Bowl. What is it like to be here in Miami? WGN's Jared Payton spoke with Neiman in Miami earlier this week. You know, just a dream come true. Something about, you know, since I've been working for since I was a little kid. So uh, really happy to be here. Um, it's been a great experience so far and just time, trying to embrace everything, take it all in. Both men talk and text to Neiman regularly, even now that he's hit the big time. When he was here, I don't know that we could have ever even dreamed that he's going to go to the NFL. Now that he's there, these coaches, now fans of Ben, say he's the same person today he was back then. And their competitive nature means they want to see number 56, now a linebacker for the Chiefs, win and walk away with a ring on Sunday. He's not a player of mine anymore. He's a, he's, he's a friend now, you know, and we're all really proud of what he's able to accomplish or has been able to accomplish. Coach. Gambling on sport is pretty commonplace, but for decades now in the United States, it's actually been very difficult. Now, if you want to gamble on sport, you can do it in Las Vegas casinos like this one. But if you're placing bets in most other parts of the country, you've been doing it illegally. That changed on Monday, though, with the Supreme Court ruling that should change the entire landscape. But no one's quite sure how exactly things will change. But the owner of the Dallas Mavericks uh, NBA team, Mark Cuban, uh, thinks that it will benefit professional teams and leagues massively. He says the value of franchises in the U.S. could double. The NBA and its commissioner, Adam Silver, have been very progressive on this issue, but other leagues seem to be more reticent. Earlier I asked Forbes magazine's Chris Smith why that is. I think there's a handful of factors that play into that. Uh, one, you have a lot of owners who I think are younger, a bit more tech savvy, who have backgrounds uh, and have made their fortunes um, in technology. And I think coming from that space, uh, they may be a bit more progressive in terms of how they view um, sports gambling, uh, as opposed to you know, NFL owners who typically you know, a bit older um, and not as progressive in terms of uh, adopting that kind of worldview. Uh, secondly, the NBA is much more international, I think, than just about any other sport uh, in the United States. And you know, around the world, sports gambling is hardly stigmatized the way it is here in the States. Um, you know, it's the norm. If you go to London to watch a soccer match, uh, you see teams with jerseys with gambling companies on the shirt. Uh, you have uh, wagers being made in the stadium or right outside the stadium. Um, it's just part of the game. And so I think that the NBA, being such an international league, uh, and having such a broad fan base um, realizes that a bit more and maybe has uh, a bit more firsthand experience uh, in international waters and understands the way that um, sports betting isn't necessarily a bad thing for pro sports, uh, but can help it. And there's an idea here that somehow the leagues and the teams and the owners are going to take a slice of these gambling profits. The NBA is asking for 1% of all uh, wagers being made on NBA games. Uh, you know, and betting experts I've talked to say it sounds a small, but 1% of the total handle or the total bets being made is really about 20% of a sports book's revenue. Uh, and so they're asking for a major cut of the action here. And it seems, you know, I don't think it's going to be an easy fight for them to win. The sports books are going to push back because, you know, it's very hard to run a profitable sports book when you're giving away one fifth of your money um, to the NBA. Um, and it seems, you know, the NBA's claim is they need this money to help ensure the integrity of the game. Uh, and so I'm not sure how much weight that claim is going to carry, uh, you know, once it comes down to the negotiating table. That's fascinating. What do you think? Do they deserve it? Do they deserve that kind of money? I, uh, I don't think so. Um, I mean, if you, you know, their argument is that it's a, you know, quote unquote, integrity fee. And 
presumably, you know, the, they're not going to be doing anything differently than they are now. <laughs> and the illegal gambling market is currently over, you know, 100 billion, uh, some estimate as much as $150 billion a year. Uh, so whatever pressures gambling uh, puts on these players and puts on the league already exist. And I think there's little if any evidence that cheating is happening now. Uh, so it seems, you know, for the league, it's continuing to operate business as usual. I don't understand, you know, why they would need any extra money, uh, except for the fact that obviously owners want to make money. Um, and this provides, you know, a big new revenue stream. Um, so uh, I don't know whether or not they deserve kind of the 1% cut. Um, but I, it'll be interesting to see, too, how they expand this into other new revenue streams, yeah. whether it's bringing, you know, gambling sponsors, uh, putting up signage in the arenas, uh, you know, whether it's adding gambling options in-house and having, you know, the ability to bet on games while you're at a game. Uh, so I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity here for the leagues, uh, even be beyond that uh, direct payout.